Bargain with Tom. The only are not. नास्त्र विचार नैक निपुण सर्धर्म संस्थापक त्रिभुवने मन्यासरण्यकर राधा कृष्ण पतार भजना नंदे नमस्तालिक वंदे रूप सनातन रघुयुग जीव गोपाल वंदे रूप सनातन रघुयुग श्री जीव गोपाल Inquiring about eternal religious principles. In the Naradiya Purana it is said, if one is actually very serious about devotional service, then all of his purposes will be served without any delay. Being prepared to give up everything material for Krishna's satisfaction. In the Padma Purana it is stated, for one who has given up his material sense enjoyment and has accepted the principles of devotional service, the opulence of Vishnu Loka, the kingdom of God, is awakening. Regarding residing in a sacred place, in the Skanda Purana it is also said that for a person who has lived in Dwarka for six months, 
for one month or even for one fortnight there is awaiting elevation to the Vaikuntha Lokas. And all the prophets of Sarutya Mukti, the privilege of having the same four-handed bodily features as Narayana. In the Brahma Purana it is said, the transcendental significance of Purushottam Shetra, which is an 80 square mile field of Lord Jagannath, cannot be properly described. Even the demigods from higher planetary systems see the inhabitants of this Jagannath Puri as having exactly the same bodily features possessed by one in Vaikuntha. That is, the demigods see the inhabitants of Jagannath Puri as being four-handed. When there was a meeting of great sages at Naimisharanya, Sutta Goswami was reciting Srimad Bhagavatam and the importance of the Ganges was stated as follows. The waters of the Ganges are always carrying, carrying the flavor of Talasi offered at the lotus feet of Sri Krishna. And as such, the water of the Ganga are ever flowing, spreading the glories of Lord Krishna. Wherever the sacred water of the Ganges are flowing, all will be sanctified, both externally and internally. Okay, we'll go on to Srimad Bhagavatam. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Narayanam Namaskrityam Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Jaiva Narottamam Devim Saraswadim Vyasam Tato Jaya Muti Raya Nasta Prayeshu Abatreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevayam Bhagavate Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki. We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 21, entitled Conversation between Manu and Kardama, text number 17. Lokams, Lokams, Cha, cha Lokanugata, Lokanugata, Pasumscha, Pasumscha Hitva Shitaste Charanapatram Parasparam Parasparam Twatguna Vadasidu Piyusha Niryapita Deha Dharmaha Lokam scha Lokam scha Pasum scha Lokam scha Lokam Patram Parasparam tvat guna vada siddhu Piyusha nirya pita deha dharma Lokamscha loka nugatan pasumscha 
Hitvashritaste charanata patram Parasparam twat guna vada siddhu Parasparam twat guna vada siddhu Piyusha niryapita deha dharma Lokamscha lokanu gatan pasumscha Lokamscha lokanu gatan pasumscha Parasparam twat guna vada siddhu Piyusha nirya pita deha dharma Lokamscha loka nugatan pasumscha Itva sritaste charanata patram Parasparam twat guna vada siddhu Parasparam twat guna vada siddhu Piyusha nirya pita deha dharma Lokamscha loka nugatan pasumscha Lokamscha loka nugatan pasumscha Hitva sritaste charanata patram Parasparam twat guna vada siddhu Piyusha nirya pita deha dharma Lokam cha Lokam <laughs> Lokamcha <laughs> Lokam cha loka nu gatta basham cha Hitab shukadate charanad damta Parash param to guna vidhashikar Piyoshari gupta deho dharma Loka worldly affairs, worldly affairs, cha and, and 
Loka Anugatam The followers of worldly affairs The followers of worldly affairs Pashun Pashun Bisli Bisli Cha and Etwa Having given up Having given up Shita Taken shelter Te You Charana Of lotus feet Atapatram The umbrella Parasparam With one another Twat You Guna Of qualities Vada By discussion Siddhu Intoxicating Piyusha by the nectar Niryapita extinguish Deha Dharma the primary necessity of body. However, persons who have given up stereotype worldly affairs and the beastly followers of these affairs, and who have taken shelter of the umbrella of your lotus feet by drinking the intoxicating nectar of your qualities and activities in discussion with one another, can be free from the primary necessities of the material body. Everyone please repeat. However, persons who have given up However, persons who have given up stereotyped worldly affairs, stereotyped worldly affairs and, the beastly and the beastly followers of these affairs, of these affairs and, who have taken and who have taken shelter of the umbrella of your lotus feet by drinking the intoxicating nectar of your qualities and activities in discussions with one another can be freed from the primary necessities of the material body. After describing the necessity of married life, Kardama asserts that marriage and other social affairs are stereotype regulations for persons who are addicted to material sense gravity, sense enjoyment. The principles of animal life, eating, sleeping, mating, and defending are actually necessities of the body but those who engage in transcendental Krishna consciousness, giving up all the stereotyped activities of this material world, are free from social conventions. Conditioned souls are under the spell of material energy or eternal time, past, present, and future. But as soon as one engages in Krishna consciousness, he transcends the limits of past and present and becomes situated in the eternal activities of the soul. One has to act in terms of the Vedic injunctions in order to enjoy material life. But those who have taken to the devotional service of the Lord are not afraid of the regulations of this material world. Such devotees do not care for the conventions of material activities. They boldly take to, the sh to that shelter which is like an umbrella against the sun of, against the, the, the sun of repeated birth and death. Constant transmigration of the soul from one body to another 
is going to come and offer his daughter to Kadama. And Kadama has been praising married life, but he is also critical about it. He also understands that it can be very dangerous also. In the path of material and pleasures, one can become intoxicated and forget the real purpose of life. <coughs> so previously Manu had been glorifying married life, but now he's speaking in a, in a different way about it. And he's describing how uh, it's that people uh, they Uh, they become lost in material life, in the will of samsara, in the will of birth and death, because of their attachment to the material activities. Material activities mean eating, sleeping, making and depending, or what we call the animal propensities, right? The animal lives. Animals are also doing these things, and the human beings we also meant to, we have to perform some, these activities to some extent, but we're meant to be regulated. Animals are controlled by nature. Human beings have to practice control themselves. They're given more freedom than, than the animals. Animals have their own type of food, their own seasons for mating and their own ways of defending. And human beings are meant to regulate these activities. Just like we know in the Vedic path, there are principles to follow. Just like eating. We say, yeah, you can eat, but don't eat everything, right? Don't eat meat, fish, and eggs. Avoid these kind of foods. Eat food in the mode of goodness. And best of all is to eat Krishna prasada. The devotees of the Lord, they eat food which is first of all offered in sacrifice. And in this way they're relieved from sin. So this is regulation. Regulation in eating. Regulation in sleeping. We have some free will again. But the animals like that, the bear can sleep all winter. Some animals, like the jackal, they're awake all night. They don't sleep much in the day. Or rather, they sleep in the day and they're awake at night because they eat at night. They, they don't eat in the daytime. Right? So that's the jackal. But, and then you've got birds like the, 
owl, they close their eyes all day, but they open their eyes at night. And so, for human beings, we have some free will. You know, some people go off all night, you know, they go to the clubs, they go to the casino, they're engaged in a lot of activities at night, and they sleep all day. But for devotees, they have a different lifestyle, right? We, we like to wake up early in the morning. Ordinary materialistic sense enjoyers, they sleep late. They don't want to get up in the morning. They'll sleep very late. But the devotee is very concerned to wake up early in the morning and to take part in a spiritual program. Come to Mongol Arti if the one has the opportunity. That's the best way to start the day. Srila Prabhupada said, come to Mongol Arti, your day is auspicious. Right? So some people don't come for Mongol Arti, they come for the Govinda prayers, greet the deities. Okay, at least they're coming to temple. They're coming, they're seeing the deities, they're hearing Govinda, and maybe they'll even stay and hear Srila Bhagavatam. Very nice. Not many people, but some people. So this regulation in sleeping, some regulation. We, we don't sleep too much, don't sleep too little. If you don't, if you don't sleep, if you sleep too little, then when you come to Bhagavatam class, you don't hear very well. I do not hear conquer sleeping. And similarly also, the Goswamis of Vrindavan, they conquered over eating and sleeping. Nidrahara viharana kinpano, nidrah tattva tattva tur namashesha mandala padi shanin sadatu chavat bhutva dina grahesha ho kopina kanshratito. Oh, that, that, oh, that verse is describing how they gave up their wealth and accepted loincloths. But then, Sankhya purvaka nama gana natibi kalo vasani. So, Nidrahara Vihara Kari Pichito Chaitanya Dinod Radha Krishna Gunasmita Madurima Nandena Samohito Bande Rupa Sanatanora Kuchago Shri Jiva Gopalako. The Goswamis' uh, activities are described that they, they conquered over eating and sleeping. And how did they do it? because they were always busy remembering the transcendental qualities and recounting the transcendental qualities of Radha and Krishna. Radha Krishna kunas mitter madurima nandena samohita. They were always describing the qualities of the Lord with his consort. So this way, they lost it. They forgot all about eating and sleeping. It's not that they had to control themselves like we come to a Kadesi, maybe you do near Jali Kadesi. It's a great effort for us, you know. Oh, you know, when will it be over? We're looking at the clock, you know, how long to go. With great endeavors, you know. But the Goswamis, they didn't have to endeavor because naturally they were so absorbed in remembering and describing Krishna that they forgot all about eating and sleeping. So, of course, this is the nature of Krishna consciousness. When we get the higher taste, we can give up these things, right? Vishaya vinivartante nirahrasya dena rasabhajam rasopyasya the embodied soul may be restricted from sense enjoyment, but the taste remains, right? We may say, I'm not going to eat, I'm not going to sleep today, I'm not going to eat, I'm going to sleep. Like Vaikuntha Ikarasi, right? Stay awake all night. Some people, South Indian people like to do that. Vaikuntha Ikarasi, fasting and no eat, no sleeping, right? So, you can restrain yourself, but the, as soon as it's, oh, I'm glad it's over, now I can eat, right? <laughs> oh, I'm going to take rest, I've been awake all night, now I have to sleep, I have to make up. The taste still remains, 
right? You try to stop yourself from doing it, but we still have an attraction, we still want to do these things. But when we have the higher taste, this Paramdrisva, then, then you're fixed in consciousness. You don't even think about it. You don't think about sleeping. You've got so much to do, so much chanting to do, so many books to read, so much preaching to be done. I have no time to sleep. I don't want to sleep. Don't want to sleep. Don't want to eat. Conquered over these things. Of course, if you don't, if we don't eat and don't sleep, then we'll get sick, right? We won't, we won't be able to go on for long. We can't imitate that kind of advanced devo devotion. Very, very advanced. What we do have to do, however, is to regulate our eating and sleeping. Right? Don't eat all the time. Don't just eat everywhere and every, anywhere. Be very careful how much we eat. Don't eat too much. And we don't usually have a problem with eating too little. The problem <laughs> with, is with eating too much. Right? Don't eat. And the same with sleeping. We don't have a problem with sleeping too little. The problem is sleeping too much. Right? So we have to regulate these, these activities. That's the first thing. Gradually, we can conquer over these things. Just like one has strong sexual desires. You want to enjoy the opposite sex. So then, married life is there. Married life is opportunity for one to enjoy the company of the opposite sex. But, that's also under strict regulation. One can associate only with his married wife. And the purpose of it, there should be also children. It's meant for family life. Otherwise, 100% devoted in Krishna consciousness. So married life is allowed. There's some opportunity there. But with restriction. And uh, gradually, of course, we should give it up. Just like married life is allowed, young people, as you get older, you don't want married life. You want retired life. You move into vanaprastha. That is successful family life. The successful family life leads into renunciation renunciation, where we become more attached to our devotional activities. We're less concerned with making money and enjoying, and we're more concerned with spiritual practice. So that is the progression from Brahmachari to Grihastha, just like we're going to hear Kardama Muni. He's going to, he accepts Manu's daughter for his wife, but after some actor enjoying householder life, then he renounces and he takes sannyas, he goes off, he leaves his wife with a child. The child, of course, is, Dev, is Kapila Muni, and Kapila Muni will instruct the, the, the wife in the process of self realization. So that is the proper method, that's the proper standard of Krishna conscious behavior. Prabhupada explains, he said, when I was a young man, I gave up mating and defending. Mating and defending. Prabhupada, as a young, first of all, he was married, young, and then he had five children, and then he gave up mating. I already got five children. That's hmm. enough, right? You don't want more than that. It's a lot. Even you have one child, it's enough to bring up one child. Okay, enough. So, then, he, 
Prabhupada said when he was young, he gave up mating and defending. Defending. We're thinking this is my, this belongs to me, my property, my enjoyment, my asset. So he gave up defending and making. He said then, he said now in my old age, I have also given up eating and sleeping. Because Prabhupada in his old age, he was not in good health and he was not able to eat. And he was not able to eat, he was not sleeping much also. Actually, for several years, Prabhupada very much minimized his sleeping. He was sleeping only two hours a night. And he was waking up to write the books, to write his Bhaktivedanta purports. So in this way, he showed us how the life should be. We should be like that. Gradually, we have to conquer over these bodily demands. In fact, nature enforces us like that. As you get older, you're not able to eat so much, and you're not able to sleep so much. When you're young, you can eat a lot, and you can sleep a lot too. But as you get older, it becomes more difficult for people to eat. You cannot eat much, you have indigestion, you can't taste, you can't enjoy all the things you would eat when you were young. You don't even have the desire because you've already tasted so many things. So you have less attraction to eating and you also have less desire to sleep. That should naturally follow. And of course, the mating and defending, they should be given up earlier in life. In old age, you don't want to be thinking of, again, mating and defending. We have to understand the nature of these demands, these desires which are in the body. We have to control them. In the beginning, we have to control. And gradually, as we go on, gradually we minimize them. We reduce them. So this, is, this can be done. How do we minimize them? Not by force, not like the impersonalists the yogis who are doing it as a tapasya. But we do it by becoming more Krishna conscious. That the more we're hearing and chanting about Krishna, the more we start to taste the nectar in Krishna consciousness. We get more and more pleasure in the activities of chanting and dancing See, coming and serving the deities, all of these activities give us more and more desire for Krishna consciousness. Unless, the more we have desire for Krishna consciousness, the less we have the desire for eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. It comes natural. You cannot be Krishna conscious and at the same time a lot of desires for eating, sleeping, making, and defending. We have to minimize these the bodily demands. And we minimize them by becoming Krishna conscious. The more we engage in hearing and chanting, the more we get a taste for hearing and chanting. We become attached, just like hearing Srimad Bhagavatam and reading Prabhupada's books. We should become very attached to this. We should become strongly attached to chanting the holy name and taking part in kirtan. We want to go out and chant the holy name and give the holy name. Sometimes devotees come here, you know, remember that one man, Bhakta Avatar, a disciple of Lokna Swami, you know, he would come He'd go like wherever he'd go many places. He came here every, every day. He's out chanting, dancing. Every kirtan is dancing in the kirtan. You know, great taste for the holy name. So that is 
we want to develop that taste. It's like the Goswamis, they had the same taste. We also want to follow in the footsteps of the Goswamis, right? Rupanugas, following the example of Rupa Goswami. What did they do? What did the Goswamis do? They were always engaged in Krishna conscious activities, discussing topics of Krishna in the association of devotees. So that discussion of the topics of Krishna is compared to an umbrella. Just like umbrella protects us from the rain and from the heat, Prabhupada said also, he said, dog comes, you can use the umbrella to chase the dog. So umbrella is the shelter from the material energy. And our umbrella is this hearing and chanting and discussing topics of Krishna in the association of devotees. Hmm. Topics of Lord Krishna, Satam Prasangam Amaverya Sambhido Babanti Ritkara Narasayana Pita Raj Joshanadya Shapa Vargavatmani Shradharati and Bhaktira Nukramishati Topics of Lord Krishna, when heard in the association of devotees, are very pleasing to the ear and to the heart. By such association, by such discussion, then uh, we develop real faith and then attachment and stadarati uh, bhakti and real devotion for the Lord awaken one after another. So devotional service is a process. We have to follow the process, right? We go through the, the different stages, beginning with adoshradha, faith in the beginning, some faith, a little attachment, attraction brings us here. And then sadhu sangha, association with the devotees. Adoshradha, uh, sadhu sangha, bhajana kriya. We take up devotional service, devotional activities. And in the course of these devotional activities, Anantana. there should be also initiation. So at some point we take initiation. And then next comes Anartha Nivriti. We have to get rid of all of the, the, these desires from the heart. We want to get rid of all the the lust and the greed and the envy and the anger, all of these things which are there in the heart, we have to remove them by devotional service, simply by engaging in hearing and chanting, working for Krishna. We have to do these things, we have to do this very intensely. We have to hear about Krishna very carefully. So you devotees are very fortunate. Prabhu, devotees like Hikvaku Prabhu come here and give you seminars. And before it was Bhakti, Brihad Bhagavat Maharaj came and gave seminar. And so many different senior devotees coming, spending their time here with you. You have to take advantage to increase your sadhana and to increase also our preaching. We're coming up to the holy month of Kartik. It's a great opportunity for preaching, right? We want to go around with the Diwali coming. People are in the festival mood. I saw everywhere, I, I was in Singapore, the whole big, big long street was decorated with Diwali lights and chariots and things. They already lit up the things that began already practically. And then in Johor Bahru also, they have a big Diwali program. There's a Diwali market. Shiva Chaitanya is going to go there, right? Going to go there. And Melaka told I was in Melaka. The devotees in Melaka told me they have a program every day of Kartik. 
Tamil schools, they're going to Tamil school every day. They've been invited to come there every day during Kartik to get program. And so like that, a lot of preaching opportunities. Every evening also house programs are planned. So we also, you need to be, we need to be very active. When we're active in Krishna consciousness, it's no time for maya. That's the benefit of being fully engaged, having too much to do. Very nice. If you have nothing to do, oh, then it's very bad. But if you have too much to do, very good, wonderful. We want that situation. There should be a lot to do. We all should have a lot to do keep, to keep ourselves fully engaged in Krishna consciousness, distributing the nectar, giving other people the shelter to take advantage. Just like you have an umbrella, there's a heavy rain, you come on, come under my umbrella, come on, I'll give you shelter. So we want to also share the shelter of this topics of Krishna, hearing and chanting the topics of Krishna, we want to share it, give the shelter to others also. We don't just only take shelter for ourselves, we want to give shelter to others also. And there are many people waiting for Krishna consciousness. We shouldn't think, oh, nobody's interested, oh, it's so difficult of the no there are many people suffering waiting to get krishna consciousness we have to be eager to give it to them other people are doing their preaching you can see that uh, uh, the Sikhs have built their big temple now i was hearing this morning that they're playing the quran now. the most they're reading the quran they never had that before that's new, isn't it? Huh? Now they do. Now they think. They change the time. Only here. Only here. Yeah. So we have to compete. They're doing theirs. We have to do ours, right? They should. We should let them hear the holy name. Not that we think. Oh, I have to hear the Quran. Oh, we should, have, we should be playing Hare Krishna Mantra. We have to give this, our spiritual sound vibration. Give it to them. Let everybody hear the holy name. So much more benefit in the holy name. The holy name that alone. That it's so powerful. It can cleanse the heart. It can change the lives of the unfortunate misdirected condition souls. So we want to really endeavor, we want to think about how to distribute this Krishna consciousness. And when we're thinking, the more we're thinking about it, the more Krishna will arrange, he will send people, he will arrange it for us. So much can be done. Somebody was telling me that, he said, he said oh, I only see the Batu Kawan people. He said, I never see the Iskon people. I only see the Batu Kawan people going everywhere, preaching, book distribution. He said, where are all the Iskon devotees? So we don't want to just let them take over everything. No, we have to go forward. We have to go out, preach, distribute, <coughs> give the mercy. Okay, any questions? Yes? Here the most, the first most prominent word is mentioned stereotype. 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 Ah. So, is it only meant for worldly affair or animal kind of life? Well, how is the word used here when it talks about stereotyped, uh, given up stereotype worldly affairs? And other, 
We say the blind follow the blind. Yes. Right? This is stereo. They, they don't think about what they're doing. Worldly affairs. What are these worldly affairs? Eating, sleeping, making, depending. You take a survey out there on the road, on the highway. 100% everybody's engaged in either eating, sleeping, making, or depending. Their business is that. Wherever they're going, whatever they're doing, the motivation is for these four things. Nobody has any other higher motivation. This is stereotyped worldly affairs. People just, well, my father did it. Just like this, we tell the story about Magrari the hunter. Narada Muni said to him, why are you doing this? Why are you giving these animals so much pain? He said, well, my father taught me to do it. The same way people say, my father taught me to eat meat and to drink beer and smoke cigarettes. My father taught me to, you know, to enjoy material life. Everybody's doing it. Why shouldn't I do it? The blind follow the blind. This is called chewing the chew. Prahlad Maharaj says, right? Punas puna charvita charvananam. They're chewing what is already being chewed. And they're thinking, oh, I'm enjoying, I'm happy. There's no real pleasure there, but there's, there's the illusion of pleasure. So this is stereotyped worldly affairs. No thought has gone into the man. People don't think, the man before me died, one day I will also. Nobody's getting ready for death. Everybody's thinking, I'll go to doctor. We have a new hospital. We have more medicine. I won't die. Everyone dies. But nobody makes any attempt to get out of the wheel of birth and death. Nobody makes any, nobody's thinking, where am I going to go in the next life? They're just trying to cling on, cling on to this life. So they can continue their eating and sleeping and mating and defending. So this is the blindness of the conditioned soul. Stereotype, you could say conditioning. It's the same thing. Uncontrolled senses. Because their senses are uncontrolled, they engage in so many sinful activities. And then because of their sinful activities, they have to take birth again. They have to come again in another miserable material body. And no guarantee even of a human body. So human life is special. We have to make proper use of it. So we built this temple to show people how to make proper use of the human life. That they can come here and they can hear the glories of Krishna. They can worship the beautiful deities. This is proper use of the human life. Everyone's looking at the beauty in the human body. The young man looks at the beauty in the young woman. The young woman looks at the young man. And they're thinking about enjoyment. But the real beauty is in the form of Krishna. When we see the deities, then we see real beauty. Material body is not beautiful. Material body is a lump of stool. Right? Just manifest, we put a nice covering on it. But it's just a bag with blood and stool, bones and horrible things. But it is a material body. But we're very expert in decorating it to make it look nice. So we have to get out of this conditioning. We have to see the reality. Uh, 
Okay, any other question? No? Yeah? No? Okay. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Kod Premanan.